Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, the madman behind Shades of Vengeance, and the man behind v a quite a few number of the, of era games, several of which have been covered on this channel in the past. Now adding one, mo one more to that list with era Kaiju, which is current, which is currently on Kickstarter and currently at at. 2,500 25, US or um, just, just shy... Just under 2,000 UK. Yep, just shy of 2,000 pounds. Um, the one and only Ed Jowett. How Hi are you doing today, man? It's it's great to be back. Um, I, I, you, you can't seem to get rid of me for more than a month at a time, can you? Um, still, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I want to get rid of you? <laughs> Someone has to stop me eventually, and just no one has the guts yet. Well, I suppose I suppose the f the first place that I will start is uh, is on the or is on the origin on the origin story. Now, obviously, kaiju's been kaiju's been been a thing that's been a, that's been around in one form or another for decades. Oh. What was Very your really first in, what was your first introduction to the idea of just ki of of kaiju in this form? So, um I growing up I was aware of the Hollywood uh Zilla movie in the 90s. My sympathies. Um sorry. My sympathies. Oh, yeah, well f fair dues, fair dues. Um and uh, I remember watching the animated series, uh, a few episodes of it at least, at some point. Um, but uh, then the legendary Godzilla movies started coming out, and I didn't watch any of them as cinema, but I did, I did watch both uh, Godzilla and King of the Monsters. And then a friend of mine said... You ain't seen nothing yet. Um, he's a very good friend of mine. He's been involved in in several of my games, um, and he's run quite a few. He he was a little involved in Era of the Chosen in the early days um, of that particular game. He's he's run many of of my games with me, <clears throat> and he said, "Look, Ed uh, Lucas is his name. So if you're watching Lucas, hi, there you are. I'm mentioning you." He said, "Look." We, we we should do we we're, we're just on a we're done a New Year's Eve or something like that where we watch the Turtles movies because we were all just sat no we did New Year's Eve with action movies and then we did the Turtles movies the the nineties Turtles movies that is the good ones um and uh, you know the 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 secret of the ooze and Turtles and never seen I'd never seen those two I'd seen the first one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, and, um, he, he, he said, look, we should, we should do a kaiju evening. That would be hilarious. And so, uh, so it wound up being that we watch, I, I seriously have to look up the name of this, the name of this movie, because I keep forgetting to do that. Um, it came out around 2000 and it was, a uh, like a, no, maybe, yeah, about that. And it was like a 50th anniversary job. And, and it had... Godzilla and then all of the other kaiju, basically. That'd and probably aliens be Final Wars. Them. Final Wars, that's the one. Final Wars, yes. That's what it's called. Um it it, it, it was phenomenal. Um from from the aliens being a K pop band to the the, the just the, the absolute disrespect they showed the laws of physics from beginning to end. I, I adored it. Um, very much, obviously, a tongue-in-cheek, ridiculous kind of job. Yeah. Rather than, say, the original Godzilla or Godzilla Minus One, which are obviously much more serious movies. Mm -hmm. Um, and I thought to myself, I could do this. I could do this. Mm -hmm. 
I could give you this on your table. I could do that. And I was sat there with Leo, a uh, longtime friend, and, and Robert, another one. And the four of us, we were just sort of chatting about it. And I was like, yeah, well, I'd do this, and I'd do this, and I'd do this. But I need to think a bit more about this aspect and that aspect. Mm-hmm. And that's where it came from. It came from a movie night of us sitting down and watching Godzilla movies. Yeah. I can I can certainly see that. And um, the... If you if you're curious why the why Zilla gets his gets his ass kicked so thoroughly in, in Final oh, Wars, it's because no one likes him. Lucas was very very able to explain that to me yeah. that nobody likes that movie. Well, there, um, after in the <coughs> Toho movies after Zilla came out, um, there were multiple times where Toho took a few pot shots at it. <laughs> it they yeah. ca- they kind of held a grudge, which. I, I can't, I can't condemn, because 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 Lord knows I've used the gag of the Book of Grudges on multiple occasions. The, the Godzilla movie was pretty dire. Um, I did find, I did find out that 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 thing was a series of compromises that maybe shouldn't have happened since the original draft um had Godzilla in Atlantis, which. I'm not gonna say it would have been better, but it certainly couldn't have been worse. Would have been different. Mm-hmm. It, um, it would have been more in keeping with the 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 more light-hearted approach of, say, Final Wars, for example, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. But Godzilla and Atlantis. There... Sorry, um, that's awesome because, like, you've then got like the serious movie mm-hmm. potential with the not serious potential. So, like, you've got Godzilla in Atlantis, and he's the reason that Atlantis sinks. But at the same time, that is ridiculous. Yeah. But you've also got this horrific, sort of, unstoppable monster. Yeah. I can see it. I can see it. Mm-hmm. I can see the... that. And since you brought up Minus One, the the thing that's funny about that, especially given more recent news, um, is the fact that that thing only cost, I think, about $15 yeah. million. Yeah, I know, right? Fifteen million, and you've and you've got a bunch of you got a bunch of Hollywood ass sh- um, slop that ends up costing like two hundred or two hundred and fifty, and can't and be and can't break even because of that high cost. Yeah, oh. yeah, absolutely. Um, I I I have a lot of surprised reactions about my own movie, um, because I got that movie done for a very, very small budget relative to most people who are in the know. Mm -hmm. Most people are a bit surprised at how well I was able to do. Um, But if you, if you look, you can cut costs. If you don't, I I always say that on any project, you need someone to say no to you. Otherwise you end up with Star Wars episode one. Because let's face it, no one was going to say no to George Lucas. He's George freaking Lucas in the early 2000s. Yeah. No one's saying no. Well, um, if you well, there's a reason why why Empire is considered the best. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not sure where you're going with that one. Um, I mean, he, he I know had, it's considered the best. I'm just not sure. I er, um, had... Kirshner was was somebody oh, who right. he had to he had, he had to have back and he had to have back and forths with. Right, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yes. You need someone there to say no, and failing someone there to say no, you can have a budget that says no, so you have to make compromises, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you have unlimited money and no one's going to say no to you, and unlimited time, you're basically going to make garbage. Uh, then, then what? I know would be I know would be tempting. It'd be tempting to bring up more recent fail- failings, but but whenever it comes to the whole wasting a whole bunch of money, I always I always think of some of those over some of those over bloated um, productions from like the sixties. You know, stuff Waterworld like Cleopatra. Is quite, an, quite an interesting example, of course. Yeah, Wat- Waterworld's an interesting case case of that. I'd also say, um, even though it was somewhat successful the abyss yep but equally it i don't feel like the abyss was supposed to be a financial success i feel like the abyss was 
James Cameron wanted to prove it could be done. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly CGI, right? Because yeah. it was the first real use of CGI in a movie. The big thing, the big thing was the uh, was the underwater tech. Since Cameron is no slouch when it comes to diving. Yeah. And and um, it was it was at a symp it was at I think it was a symposium where he explored where he explored a certain tech that he wanted to go with when it came to when it came to the abyss, um, and build and building that massive um pool was part of the process. The pro the problem yeah. is it was it was such a nightmare that se that several of the cast members refused to go to go to the premiere. And they called the film "The Abuse." Uh, yeah. I mean, speaking as a director, it is very easy to get a bit stressed. Mm -hmm. Put it that way. Yeah, there's a lot riding on you. It's very easy to get a bit stressed, and it's quite important to remember that if you do and you take it out on people, it's bad. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, most people are very bad at not taking stress out on people. Yeah. But now, with with that in with that in mind, there are there when it came to that little marathon that you that you guys ended up doing, there are a f there there was one little note I w I did want to make, and that is, I'm not sure if you knew this, but technically, the first Ninja Turtles movie was a um, independent film. Okay. Um, oh, the the other, and this this ended up making me laugh. It was directed by the same guy who directed the Take on Me music video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, same same guy. Fair um, enough. Fair enough. I mean, back in the back in those days, mu music vi music videos were almost used as a de as a um, developmental pipeline for full on directors. Um, yeah, that doesn't surprise me very much. Mm -hmm. Um. Actually, uh, what's what's quite interesting about about Turtles is is that it it went through a lot of I'm very indie, so I'm gonna have to do this myself things uh, throughout its life, mm -hmm. animation included. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, it it hit tremendous amounts of problems and very nearly didn't happen. This thing that shaped. A lot of people's childhood. It's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. But now, getting back, getting back to yeah. er, to Eric Kai, Kaiju. So, I do one of the big things that that this is built that this is built around is the idea of the PCs are beta class um, kaiju's, and the one of the major adversaries is um, alpha class. And this is kind this is kind of hinted at in the in the uh, material, but what would you? But what would you say is the dividing line between a be a beta and an alpha? And could you give a few examples of what would constitute a beta and what would constitute an alpha type ki type um, kaiju from Absolutely. Uh, from other works? One hundred percent. Well, I might struggle more with betas, but I'll do my best. Mm -hmm. Um. So the first thing I want to say is, don't worry, anyone who's listening who's thinking, oh no. It, it is actually in the book. It's it's in the book uh, in a couple of places. I talk about alphas versus betas. Don't worry about it. If you read the book, you are totally on board with that. And I know that Mildred's read it and uh, and is just asking because it's worth illustrating. Mm -hmm. Um. So an alpha kaiju, uh, Godzilla, King Ghidorah. I actually think Rodan's questionable, but like he might be a high end beta because he's kind of crap. Um, but, um, they're bigger, they're tougher, uh, they, um, have multiple powers. So Godzilla, for example, I would say has the energy beam, obviously. Um, he has, uh, regeneration. He has, uh, proof to radiation. Uh, and, and in some versions, I believe he is radioactive as well. Yeah, especially um, especially Shin Godzilla, mm, which mm, yeah, <laughs> given some of the things that were planned that were planned for Shin Godzilla, there's an entire campaign that can be made out of that. 
Um, he has grasping hands. He's able to pick things up and and use them as weapons. Mm-hmm. He uh, is uh, what what I in in Era Kaiju he would be in aquatic form, which allows him to swim fast and and breathe underwater. So that's fine. That's not actually an extra power. But um, I came up with another one the other day when I was thinking about it, and I forget what it was now. Uh, but yeah, it's it's four or five kaiju powers, four or five different powers. Mm-hmm. Um, now, a beta kaiju is more similar to the Mutos in uh, the legendary Godzilla movie. Um, they're smaller, significantly. Maybe... Uh, Half, half the size of Godzilla, I think, for the larger of the two. The female that doesn't fly. Mm-hmm. Um, that's actually on the large end for, for a beta, but yeah, we'll, we'll call it about that. Um, they have basically one ability, and the Mutos really only have one ability, and that is radioactivity. Or... No, that's not quite true. They consume radiation, don't they? They don't. Mm-hmm. They actually have the EMP ability, don't they? They just go boom, right? Do I remember mm-hmm. that right? It's been a while it, since I watched that movie. Yeah, we'll but I go- think that's the only thing they have, right? One of them would then be an avian, and one of them would not. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably be an insectoid, squishy, uh, uh, like spiky limbs. Um, but um, they they have very limited number of powers. Uh, like I was saying, Rodan might be a very top-end beta because I think he is large, so I think he's the size of an alpha, and he's got fire powers, but that's about it. Um, So that, that would be an example of a really top-end beta rather than an alpha, which also tracks with Rodan's attitude. He's a bit, he's a bit fighty, but at the end of the day, he's not really a contender. Mm-hmm. Um... And uh, so, so that's that's the difference between an alpha and a beta. A beta has one power and is significantly smaller. Yeah, that's how you that's how you tell. Uh, would you can there's so there's a bit of there's a few names I'd like to dro- I'd like to drop on and see and see if you'd consider these an alpha or a beta in this system. Uh, I might need to use Google, but I will rapidly Google them because I don't always know the name of the kaiju. Offhand, I, I know what they look like. Mm-hmm. So um, forgive me. Um, Angelus. Uh... Mm, that didn't work. Hang on. <laughs> In Final on Wars, he was that one that was bouncing around like a hedgehog. Angelus. He's the um, he's the armadillo one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he is. Ooh, he's only really got the rolling attack, doesn't he? And he's got some armor as well. Mm-hmm. I'd say high end beta. Yeah. Um, King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah is very definitely an alpha. <laughs> um, that one I do know. <laughs> yeah, no, he's he's got a ridiculous number of powers. Having multiple heads is actually a a kaiju power in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got the lightning thing. He's got the weather control thing. He's got the flying thing. He's an avian. That's fine. Uh, he's enormous, and so on. Yeah. Um. Mothra. Mothra is complicated. Uh, she is. Oh. So reincarnation is a power. Healing is a power. I reckon again, she's a high-end beta. Um, I, I should say, at level 10, Kaiju Betas get to have a second power. So, I, I do mean the absolute top end of what a Beta can be allows you to have two powers. As far as I know, Mothra's only powers are healing and reincarnation. Yep. Please tell me if I'm wrong. You're not far, you're not far off. Um... I, I mean, and, and then any Kaiju in the game can have... Uh, uh, you know, abilities which are you know strength and and reaction time and so on. Those those sorts of abilities. I've got here. Oh, it says on Google here: flight, shape shifting, superhuman strength, and superhuman speed. So it doesn't even list the reincarnation thing. Hmm. Oh well. Um. 
Um, Gigan. Uh, he's the one with the chainsaw on his chest, isn't he? Yep. I've got that right. Yeah, cool. Um, so... In Final Wars, he appears twice. So I'm going to give you two answers. Because the first time he appears, he is a high-end beta. He is really just a cyborg. He's a large cyborg. So again, he's a level 10. Uh, a, a level 10. But he's... Cyborg is a thing you can be. Um... He is also enormous, which is one of the, the other powers. Those are the only two powers he has the first time he appears. Then when he comes back, he's been significantly enhanced. And I would say it's above and beyond the, the limits of what I have written down for the cyborg. Which is, you know, you, you have a chainsaw in your chest or in your face or wherever it is that makes sense for you when you make your character. Um, and it, or, or you could be... Um, any other kind of cyborg with, with cyborg enhancements. Broadly, that's a narrative quirk. It gives you a damaging kill threshold for attacking people, and Gigan, when he comes back, has more power than the first time. So I would say he's probably a low-level alpha at that point. I, I think that's uh, that's almost like a double cyborg, if you like, when he comes back with chainsaw hands. Mm -hmm. um... Spoiler. Sorry. Yep. Statu I have I have a stat I have a statute policy when it comes to spoilers. If something's been around for a long enough time, then I'm not gonna be concerned about spoilers. Hence the joke. Yeah. yeah very 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 much a joke on my part. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be it'd be it'd be like getting on somebody for spo <laughs> for spoiling the great Gatsby or something. <laughs> uh yeah. But um Biolanti. Oh, this one I don't know by name. It's uh oh okay I don't know this one offhand hang on what and... can what can he do? Bio... I, haven't seen... oh, I haven't seen this movie. Yeah, Biolanti uh, this... is up uh, is um obviously based on it is obviously very um plant based. Yeah, and ha and has that has that kind of setup. Um, there is there is there is regeneration with it with it with it being a plant. There is also being able to disperse its um, spores. And there's acid. Yeah, yeah, no, that's an alpha because uh, number of powers is it's got. Uh, I would say it's got constrict, which allows it to grab things in its vines and and squeeze the life out of them. Uh, it clearly has poison of some sort. It's got. You just said it's got regeneration. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, it seems to have the ability to cause uh, more tendrils to grow as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely say this is sort of a mid-level alpha. I'd expect Godzilla to win mm -hmm. um, in a fight. Like like Apex Godzilla, that is. To yeah. win in a fight. But yeah, I'd probably, probably give him a run for his money more so than anyone other than King Ghidorah that we've mentioned so far. Mm-hmm. Um... Destroyer. Uh, I know this one. Uh, sorry, let me just see which. Uh, I just need to remind myself. <laughs> um, it was the it was that multi-form one, isn't it? Yeah, that multi-form one that was um in '95. Yes. Um, I would say. Given the energy beams and the obvious regeneration that, if I recall, it showed low low end alpha, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sort of similar similar to uh, Biolanti. No, even probably less than. I would rate it slightly lower than Biolanti, but I don't remember the movie all that well, and maybe it's got some more abilities that I don't recall. Um, That's it. It does it. it... It start. It started out as mul as um mul as multiple crustaceans that would end up right. would end up evolving and then combining into the completed form. Okay. Um, it was, and it it was an attempt to try and revisit the oxygen destroyer concept from the original. 
Yes. You know the th the thing that the thing that its creator thought was so dangerous. He d he took his own life to make sure that the knowledge of it didn't persist. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Now with so would it be fair to say that the dividing line is that alphas te alphas tend to have multiple powers right out of the gate. Yeah, not only that, they, um, I mean, I mean, uh, Destroyer, uh, it evolves, it changes forms, doesn't it, if I recall correctly? Yeah, um, Shin and, has and a similar me, evolutionary yeah. setup, even if it's just one, even if Shin is obviously just one monster instead of multiple. Um, and I, I, I think it's possible to have a character who begins as a beta and becomes an alpha over time hmm. as they improve. Yeah. Um uh the 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 tiny Godzilla in Final Wars that suddenly grows into a giant Godzilla which I still haven't quite worked out yet. That feels like a lot of mass displacement. Um uh th that would be a good example of something that's definitely not an alpha and then suddenly becomes an alpha. Mm -hmm. The the baby Godzilla, I forget what it was. I forget what it's called. Um I think a, I think a lot of people just call it Minia. Oh, fair enough. You know, min, you know, mini got mini Godzilla, or yeah, or junior or so, or something like that. Ba baby Godzilla, we all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <coughs> and so, yeah, um, <clears throat> I think whether you're an alpha or not, it's it's much more about your abilities than your killer instinct, as it were. But mostly, what the ones we see in movies that fight Godzilla that are really on his level and can fight him alone and have a decent chance, they're usually alphas. Yeah. Whereas yeah. where you've got to have, I don't know, a whole bunch of them ganging up on Godzilla to win, you're more likely looking at a high-end beta, depending on the number of powers. But I suppose there could be an occasion where Something has lots of powers, but it's very weak with all of them, so it can't really do a lot to Godzilla. Mm. King Kong's a really interesting one for me, um, because uh, uh, King Kong that is as seen as in Godzilla versus Kong, because yeah. I think without the Godzilla axe, he's probably a beta, and with it, he's an alpha. That's I guess that's evolution, right? Mm -hmm. I guess that's the evolution thing I'm talking about. Um, would you put Gamera as a beta or an alpha? Uh, uh, Gamera is, yes, the, hmm, I'm trying to remember what abilities he has. Um, sorry, I looked all this up and then immediately lost all of the knowledge from my brain. Um, the big one with him is the j is the jets on the um, on the si on the side of him. Yes, and he he's in Final Wars, isn't he? He curls up and does a a wibbly thing, mm -hmm. a whirly thing. Yeah. Um. I think he does have. I'm 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 just looking at the at, at what he's got now. So he would have a protective shell. Mm -hmm. uh, he has absent energy absorption and protect uh, projection. It says here, mm -hmm. as well as claws, flight. Obviously, that's the jet engines. Yeah, I think he's an alpha, slightly odd one, but um, I think he qualifies as an alpha for how many things he can do, and particularly his durability. Mm -hmm. Um, really pushes him over the edge because um. Yeah, I, I I think I'd go with Alpha. Mm -hmm. Now, with with that in with that in mind, the I, this is as I as I understand it, one of the projects that's me, that's meant to lean a, a bit more into the um, pocket version of Era D10. That Absolutely. You, that you've re that you've recently been um built been building up. Uh, well, I've I've been doing those for for quite a while actually. Um, uh, since 
ooh, about seven, eight yeah. years ago. Yeah, a while. Yeah, it's been it's been a while, but in the, in this form, that se that seems to be relatively um, recent. Um, the one of the thing and one of the other things to note is the is the whole the whole having to communicate through not through um let through not the through non usual means is that something of an evolution of of what you had done back in the days of silence absolutely uh that is that is exactly the sort of thing i've been thinking about from it mm -hmm. um I, I i wouldn't go quite as far because being able to roar angrily or as a warning is still really useful because sound carries beyond line of sight mm -hmm. um so you can attract attention and that helps but it applying a similar rule to what i apply to era silence as in you are not allowed to explain in detail what your intentions are you aren't allowed to talk about deep analysis of the situation um i had one i had one play test i ran where um king Ghidorah, effectively but slightly weaker fell from the sky in a meteor and one of them went oh no i think this is a bad thing and and I've seen something like this before. I was like, yeah, okay, that sounds legit. That sounds fair enough. You've seen something like this before. The others might not have done. So you can warn them by going, um, which is more a, 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 a cry of warning than a cry of um, aggression, shall we say, which allows them to then go, okay, well, he's warning me, but I I need to think about what I do about that. Um, and in fact, they, they still went ahead and cracked it open anyway, so um, they, they ignored the warning. So that was that was funny for me. But um, yeah, I, I do like the idea that that you go down a similar route to Era Silence in this game. You, you don't have the ability to communicate really complicated stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's important to maintain the feel of, of being a kaiju, I guess. Yeah. I could, I could, I could very much see that. Now, with that, with that in, with that in mind, um, one of the things that you did recently with the kick, with the Kickstarter, was was um, ha having a having a number of backers type of stretch goal where you were packaging in some of the pre some of the previous stuff like liars mm. and um, hitman. That's um, right. Uh, what prompt? What prompted that sort of package deal? So, I was thinking that there are a number of ways you might want to play this game, um, and beyond the obvious of hopefully more rewards brings in more backers, which is you know obviously fair enough, and the cynical marketing point of view for it. Um, the reason I chose those particular games is Era Liars is the only other game that shares a confidence mechanic. It's also a game that's really about telling stories and interacting with other people. And if you wanted to combine that with Era Kaiju, I don't think it would take a lot of effort for most GMs. So you could have... Uh, again, going back to the Godzilla animated series, you could have the, the characters on the ground who are doing the thing alongside the kaiju who's protecting the city. Mm -hmm. Or the multiple kaiju who are protecting the city. Um, Era Hitman was because I wanted to give... I wanted to bring something into... Again, into consideration for people... A human being who could actually beat the kaiju. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a, a hitman a character who can disrupt the strong nuclear force or reverse gravity could do a lot of damage to a kaiju. Yeah. Um, even though they're enormous. And I thought that might be an interesting take for some people. So those are the reasons I chose those two games in particular. Um... Overall, I I wanted to... Era Kaiju is all about giving people 
new options. It's all about let's do something that you haven't had before within the era D10 rule set. Yeah, absolutely, you could in theory have done it, but you you would have had to put quite a lot of work in mm. to do it, and especially as you wouldn't have come out with it in its current form because obviously um era d10 light is something a little different to the era d10 rule set mm -hmm. so you would have probably come out with something different but it's it, it was it was an opportunity to do something new and and bring a new genre that i didn't feel was adequately represented by my existing games to your tabletop or by a lot or by a lot of games period the idea of playing as a as a kaiju or even as some sort of um giant is some is um something that hasn't been that hasn't been tread very often in the past that is true um i only found that out after i'd already decided to make the game interestingly enough i mean i've told you this before mildra mm -hmm. i i make games that i want to see and it's not relevant to me whether one person has made a game like it or 500,000 people have made a game like it. I make a game I want to see. Yeah. And um, the the reason I bring the reason I bring that up is because mm -hmm. one would one would think with how popular kaiju fil films have been over over fi over the last nearly 15 plus years. years. Yeah, over yeah. nearly a century that somebody would have att would have attempted it. Like yeah, so... <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I don't spare a lot of thought for why people don't do things. Um, I don't know why no one's done it. Um, I did not find it tremendously difficult. Um, as you pointed out, completely correctly, it's built on some games that I've done other things with. Um, and it's my experience has expanded as a result of making those games and made me more ready. To do era kaiju but i reckon that if there was a game designer out there who really loves kaiju they would not struggle that much to bring kaiju to life on someone's tabletop mm -hmm. so it makes me wonder maybe maybe the people who really like kaiju and want to play kaiju games maybe what they're actually doing is they're homebrewing something they might they might they might be though i though I think I think that when it comes I think that when it comes to um to to those to those homebrews we can always go one step further. Not everyone has time, right? Mm -hmm. Not everyone has time to homebrew something. Not everyone has the capacity. Um, some groups are merciless around balancing, and when you homebrew something, things go wrong. So yeah, as you say, I'm I'm very pleased to bring kaiju to your tabletop without those problems and considerations and it's such an easy game to learn with only six stats that are rollable it, it does make life a lot easier i think mm -hmm. now with that in with that in mind um what would you be shooting for as far as a total page count i know this is going to be a smaller page count since it's a pocket rule book um 32. All right, uh, for those of you who can't see me, unlike Mildra, I just picked up the book and double-checked how many pages it is. Yeah. And as far as the release window, are you, are you thinking shortly after the Kickstarter wraps up, the way, like what happened with Dreadwest? Absolutely. Um, it's ready. Um, my proof here, I'm going to put a couple of changes into it because I've had some ideas during the course of the campaign. Uh, that is always the way, but uh, it's it's a good opportunity to do it. Um, and um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to bringing this out really soon afterwards. Uh, I I don't see any reason whatsoever to wait around. I've got lots more I want to do this year. Um, and uh, Era Kaiju is just the second game this year. I'm hoping of really quite a few that I want to that I want to get out the door. Mm-hmm. That's I can certainly get behind that. And with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule 
to come all the way to my show and enjoy the madness that happens here. Thank you so much for having me, Mildra. It's always a pleasure. And I'm hoping to be back before uh, before you even know what's going on. <laughs> um that's a that's a bold that's a bold strategy given how I keep my ear to the ground all the damn time. <laughs> we'll see we'll see how it pay, we'll see how that strategy pays off. <laughs> but uh, of course a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there'll be yes, plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>